I will uh, talk about uh, some uh, recent work on uh, discrete uh, uniformizations for polyhedral surfaces. And uh, uh, the first lecture will be very elementary. And then uh, as I progress, as I will get into a little bit more details. So, uh, so let me just recall, uh, uh, let's let S to be a connected surface. And uh, if we t let me just recall the classical uh, situation. Let's let G be a Riemannian metric. Uh, on your surface, uh, and then we can uh, talk about uh, the conformal classes. And so uh, suppose we have two of them. So G, uh, G and G primes are two Riemannian metrics. And then uh, uh, G and G hat uh, are conformal, uh, meaning uh, these, these metric is going to define the angles for you on your surface uh, if and only if uh, we can write one metric as a, a scalar multiplication of another one. So where u is a, is a function. OK, so that's a conformal. The conformal class gives you the Riemann surface. And so, so, so you would take this to be the conformal class. of the metric. Uh, so this is a set of all Riemannian metric which are conformal to G. And uh, let's assume S is orientable. Uh, and then uh, this pair is a Riemann surface. Um, so this is sort of the fundamental object in, uh, in, in geometry. And the uniformization theorem says the following. So, uh, Uh, it states that uh, for any uh, for any connected surface and for any connected for any Riemannian metric, I can find uh, in its conformal class a unique um, Riemannian metric, which is a complete and of constant curvature. So you can find a function u from your surface uh, such that the conformal change of the metric is a complete. Riemannian metric of constant curvature uh, 0, uh, 1, minus 1. Okay. And uh, in the case of minus 1, this, 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 uh, this is unique. So, uh, so that's sort of the, the it's, it's a fundamental result in two-dimensional geometry. And, and our question is, uh, what can we say if the metric is not a smooth Riemannian metric, and so uh, whether there is any notion uh, of, uh, of a discrete conformal, so this is uh, for polyhedral surfaces. Say it's, it's like the boundary of a tetrahedra. So I give you two uh, tetrahedra. For instance, uh, uh, can you uh, define some? Uh, I give you two uh, tetrahedra in, say, three-dimensional space. These are really intrinsic, and uh, the shapes are different. Can we say? Uh, can we define some notion of? Uh, Discrete conformal uh, equivalence, uh, discrete conformal equivalence between the two, and uh, and this is by the way this problem is really motivated by computational geometries and and, and computer graphics, and so we really want to compute these uh, uniformization maps. Uh, so can you? Uh, I give you these two tetrahedra described by say six edge lenses, which, which we, we can specify the metric. And can you define some kind of a notion of discrete conformal equivalence among them, so that uh, the two uh, following basic property has to be true, so such that first uh, there there should be some kind of discrete uh, uniformization theorem. So there should be some versions of this, uh, which is true. And second, uh, this is converges. Okay, so uh, 
a discrete conformal converges to a conformal in a classical sense. And so if I produce a suffic sufficiently fine subdivisions, this discrete conformal uh, uh, theory should converge to, to, the, to the conformal case. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm going to tell you some, some of these works here. That's the goal of the, of the lecture. Um, so uh, I, should say, I should say that uh, when we talk about the discretization of some geometric structures, this is not unique. So different people will come up with different theories. So the main uh, uh, topics I'm going to cover are two. Uh, uh, one is the Thurston's uh, theory of work on, on circle packings. Metrics. Okay, so so I'm going to talk about some of the work by uh, uh, Kerb, Andrew, uh, Thurston, uh, Rodden, and Sullivan. So this uh, this work can be considered as some kind of a, a discrete Riemann mapping theorem. So this is a, uh, as you will see, it's a discrete Riemann mapping theorem. Um, uh, which is a special case of the uniformization theorem. And, and, the, and the second topic it will be my, uh, uh, my joint work with uh, 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 our work uh, uh, with uh, David Gu, uh, Jing Sun, uh, and Wu, and, uh, and, and both of them are computer scientists. And so we have softwares. By the end of the lecture, I'll show you the. Uh, so, so, so we can really compute uh, these uh, uh, uniformization uh, metrics. So, so here is one example. It's really very practically motivated. So, uh, so nowadays, uh, we, we can now scan a human face as a three-dimensional uh, face, which is, uh, uh, if you see, uh, so this is a human face. We do a scanning. And, uh, and this, you can think of that as a smooth surface. And it has a Riemannian metric induced from the Euclidean three-dimensional space. And, uh, and, and this theorem says that uh, we can produce a, a diffeomorphism, which is uh, angle-preserving, preser and map that to, a, to the unit disk. So there is a diffeomorphism from any human face to the unit disk, which is uh, Angle preserving, and and one of the motivation here uh, is uh, can we actually compute this map? In other words, can we conformally flatten the human face and see the picture in the disk? And the answer is yes. And so we will show you some flattened human face later on. Okay, this has some practical applications later on. Okay, so that's uh, that's one of the goals here. And now let me begin with uh, uh, a very elementary. Uh, uh, the topic is this is the polyhedral surfaces. Um, so it's a, the discrete setting is really a sort of uh, very simple to uh, introduce. These are the, the, the polyhedrals we see every day, uh, especially the curvature is extremely simple to define, unlike in a smooth case, the Gaussian curvature is extremely deep concept and uh, for me it's it's amazing that uh, this definition came up but for, for the for the for the discrete cases it's all uh, straightforward so so I'm gonna let s to be a surface um, uh, it could be compact and uncompact it could have some boundaries or not and um, and also I'm gonna fix a V this is a discrete set Uh, v really stands for a set of vertices. Okay, so I give you uh, this is the topological surface. I give you a topological surface and discrete set to start with. A, a triangulated surface. Uh,
is uh, a surface uh, with a triangulation T. So T is a triangulation. And by definition, uh, let me just recall uh, briefly, this is the first lecture, so I'm going to be slow. Uh, you take a collection, so take, take a disjoint uh, union of uh, Euclidean triangles. Now uh, we identify uh, parallel edges by homeomorphisms. So identify uh, the quotient space will be uh, a triangulated surface. So the quotient space, uh, uh, so quotient space. So this disjoint union is a, a triangulated surface. So uh, so in the case of a tetrahedra, uh, the tetrahedra we think of that as topologically, uh, I think of that as a as a as a disjoint union of four triangles. Um, and then we identify a uh, pair of edges by any homeomorphisms. Okay. And so, so this is your surface and the triangulation. Uh, the, the vertices uh, are these uh, coming from the vertices of the, of the unidentified triangles and edges and so on. Okay, so uh, the, here is the notion which we're going to stick to. Uh, so I'm going to let V to be the set of all vertices. Uh, e to be the set of all edges. And for some reason, I stick to, because uh, F will be used for functions. And so this uh, T2 uh, two is uh, all, all triangles. Okay. So this will be the notion I'm going to use for the rest of the uh, talk. So that's the, the top. This is a purely combinatorial setting. And now a, a polyhedral surface is uh, a, a PL metric uh, of a polyhedral surface. So uh, uh, for, for at this moment, I'm going to say a triangulated. Okay. A triangulated polyhedral surface is it's the same thing, uh, except here we have a sort of purely uh, a combinatorial description. It's a finite set of data. And now uh, it's, uh, we put a metric here. So uh, it's the same thing. I'm going to probably, I'm not going to repeat this here. It's, you take a, uh, take a disjoint union of Euclidean triangles and identify parallel edges now instead of homeomorphism. I'm going to identify that by isometries. OK, so that's the only change. And then the quotient space. Uh, gives you a, a triangulated surface because uh, isometries are homeomorphisms, but they also produce a metric structure. So, uh, so in this case, these triangles are not arbitrarily. So before, it's a topological, and so I can, I can glue these uh, triangles to different uh, edge lenses by homeomorphism. Now I require, uh, if the two edges are identified, they must have the same lens, and root by isometry. So, so now uh, this is really a surface, a triangulation, and D is a metric. This is a, this is a gluing of, so metric gluing of triangles. OK, so that's a polyhedral surface. So these tetrahedra or boundary with convex polytope that we see uh, carry, say, a metric structure, and these are the polyhedral surfaces. And that's the main uh, object of our study. Okay, so but, but, uh, but I should say that the triangulation is not 
the essential part. And so uh, by the end, we are interested uh, uh, in the isometric class. LPL matrix D. Okay, so uh, uh, for instance, uh, for instance, here are two polyhedral surfaces. Uh, you can take a cone over a square, and you take a cone over the same square. Okay, so these are exactly the same polyhedral matrix, isometric one, but but the, the triangulation we use to describe them may be different. So, so these are isometric uh, PL metrics, uh, different triangulations. So triangulation, one may think of that as some kind of coordinate systems we use to describe the metric. And then uh, by the end of the day, we're going to really drop these triangulations and focus on the metric only. So that's. Uh, uh, and we want to really describe some kind of a, a, a conformal geometries of these metrics in this setting. Okay, so uh, so that's the object. Now, um, now locally, uh, you can think so. The locally, uh, these PL metrics D are are just a, a flat cone matrix. So. Uh, these are flat, except as vertices, flat uh, 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 co-metric. So except as a vertices, it may have some uh, uh, singularities, and uh, these singularities are the cone. Uh, so these singularities are the cone uh, metric here. So near these vertices, the metric here is uh, isometric to a cone. Um, but the advantage of this is that uh, we can describe these uh, PL metrics by a finite set of data, which we can do programming. So, uh, so here is one way of uh, uh, describing it more uh, explicitly. So he here is a, uh, a, a definition. Okay, so uh, if I have a a PL uh, metric so, so suppose I have a polyhedral metric on a triangulated surface we can describe this by the, the uh, by the edge length and so it's uh, uh, it's edge length or what just a uh, uh, length uh, what simply uh, I'm going to call length It's a function depends on the metric is, uh, is a function defined on the set of all edges of the triangulation uh, to the real number. Uh, so it's a, the length of, so, so, the, uh, uh, so, so the value of the length at E is the length of the function. So this is the length of E in the metric D. Um, and, uh, and these functions satisfy the triangle inequality. So th this is a function. It satisfies uh, the triangle inequality. Suppose we see uh, three edges, uh, E i, E j, E k, uh, in your triangulation, which forms the three edges of the triangle. And then the lens, uh, say, L i, Lj, Lk satisfies the triangle inequality. Okay. So uh, uh, conversely, if I give you uh, if I give you these lens functions, you can determine the metric by just uh, uh, take the Euclidean triangle of the size determined by the lens and rule them by isometry. So so, so D uh, is uh, completely described by uh, by this lens function. Assuming we fix the triangulation, um, okay. So, so most of the time we're gonna uh, so code the metric by these 
by this, uh, this vector. Now let me give you some examples. So, uh, so the first example is the assistance uh, circle packing metric, which will be one of the main topic. The theory of assistance is really beautiful. Uh, there are still open some que open questions. So, so let me just uh, describe assistance. Uh, this is packing metric. So I take a triangulated surface. It's a topological. This is a triangulated. I give you a triangulated surface, and then we can produce a lot of very interesting uh, collection of, of polyhedral metrics on this uh, surface by doing the following. You take, take any function defined on the set of all vertices of this triangle. You just assign every vertex a positive number. And then these R's will be called the radius function. Uh, there are no constraints. So you assign every vertex a positive number. Then Thurston is going to produce a polyhedral metric for us uh, as follows. So we defined the lens function By the, the, by the formula, the lens of V1, V2. So suppose you have an edge, uh, V1 and V2, uh, with uh, boundary V1, V2. The lens of that is equal to the sum of the radii at the two uh, boundaries. So suppose at, at V1, we have a radius R1 and V2 we have a radius R2. And then the length of the edge joining them is the sum of the two radii. OK. And now it's easy to see that if you have a such assignment, then the triangle inequality holds immediately because uh, 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 because we see this picture, right? So suppose I have uh, a, a triangle in the triangulation uh, with three vertices, V1, V2, V3, and I have, uh, uh, I have assignment of these radii, uh, A, B, and C assigned to them. Then the length will be A plus B, A plus C, B plus C, and A, B, C are positive, and so some of the two is bigger than the third. So this is a, this is a, uh, clearly a, L is a, is a PL metric. And these metrics are called a circle packing metric because it's really built out of these circles and you form pairwise tangent circles and, and declare the length between the edges to be the sum of the radii. So, these, so I'm going to call L and also by abuse the language I'm going to call the radius of the circle packing. Uh, PL metrics. Okay, so this will be the uh, one of the main topic I'm going to cover today and and tomorrow, and I'm going to tell you some really beautiful theory, uh, a theorem of of systems and Rodin and Solomon as well. Okay, so um, now the curvature is the following. So he, here is the, the definition. It's again really simple and straightforward. Uh, uh, the curvature, it should, it should really be called discrete curvature, but I'm going to just uh, simplify it. The curvature K of a, a PL metric uh, is the following. is defined to be the function. Uh, if I give you a vertex, I will assign a real number less than 2 pi to it. So, so this is uh, really the most naive curvature we can think of. Uh, the curvature at the vertex is 2 pi minus a cone angle. Okay, so, uh, so it's the following. K 
pay at a vertex v is equal to, there are two situations, I'm going to cover both cases. Um, the first is, uh, is 2 pi minus uh, angle alpha at v of alpha. If v is, uh, if v is an interior vertex. So the surface may have boundary. Okay, so if, if V is a vertex of the triangulation which does not appear in a boundary, then the curvature is the sum of these angles uh, at the vertex. And, uh, 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 and if V is a vertex in a boundary, uh, then the curvature is pi minus. And V of alpha. Okay, so this is a standard definition. Uh, for instance, if your um, the surface here is uh, is a boundary of a convex polytope, then uh, at, at, at every vertex, the sum of the cone angle is less than two pi because of the convexity, and therefore the curvature at the vertex is positive, and so on. And we say a surface is flat. A PL surface is called a flat if the curvature at every interior vertex is equal to zero. So K at V is equal to zero for every <coughs> vertex in the interior. Okay, so uh, so a uh, say a, a, a polygon a polygonal disk in the plane uh, is a flat one. Okay? We, we don't control the boundary vertices. So that's a flat uh, surface. Um, and now let me, let me give you one really interesting example uh, of a flat, uh, of a flat uh, circle packing matrix. And there's still, uh, in fact, open questions. And so this is uh, 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 this is a, a so-called a Doyle uh, a spiral uh, circle packing. So uh, maybe I'm going to use uh, the next board. It's a, it's a really very, very beautiful uh, example. <coughs> So this is a picture I will convince you. So let me, let me describe it. So this is the, the Doyle's case. Uh, um, uh, if you want to see, I really should show you some pictures. Uh, you should Google uh, Doyle's spiral. You, see, you will see really uh, very nice <laughs> pictures of it. So, so what is it? Uh, I'm going to let T standard to be the, the standard, the regular. Uh, uh, hexagonal triangulation. Of the complex plane. So uh, it's, uh, it's really the gluing of, of the regular uh, of the regular uh, triangles. Okay, so this is a triangulation, it's infinite triangulation of the, of the complex plane. And, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the vertex set, the, this is the standard hexagonal uh, lattice. This is the, the, this is the vertex set, set is, a, is a, this, the hexagonal. Lattice, uh, eta is the cubic root of, of, of one. Um, now, uh, if, if, I, if I take R to be the constant one, and then we have the, the standard. This will give you uh, the standard hexagonal uh, circle packing metric. <coughs> so, uh, so this is the, the, the really the standard one we see 
Uh, so every circle is tangent to, uh, uh, every circle has radius, uh, radius one and is tangent to exactly six others. Okay, so that's the sort of the, the, the very boring uh, example. And now what uh, Doyle did is, uh, he's gonna produce, the question is, is this, is this the only flat circle packing metric uh, that you can produce on the, on, the, on the standard hexagonal triangulation? The question is, uh, 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 is uh, this the only uh, flat uh, CT metric? Uh, the answer is no, and so so he produced really a two uh, two dependent two parameter families of this, and so here is Doyle's construction, and the, it's a really beautiful construction. So so let's take take a linear function uh, be a, a linear function. So what is linear? It's a, it's a really the restriction of a linear function. Uh, uh, linear function on, on the plane to the lattice, linear on R2, restricted on V. So you take any linear function defined on the complex pl plane and restrict it to the, to the lattice. And so, uh, so you can write it as uh, 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 a lattice point here is m, m are integers, uh, can be written as uh, a n plus uh, b m. So m, m are integers. So that's a linear function. A and b are constant, real constant. Um, and then, uh, uh, then let's produce the following. So uh, give me, you give me a linear function, and let's let a radius function to be the exponential of it. And so r of v to be e to the f of v. OK. So this will be a. This will be a, so for every lattice point, you assign the exponential of a linear function, and the claim is that this is always a flat metric. So uh, the Doyle proposition is, uh, is a complex plane, and this R uh, is always flat. Okay. And the conjecture is that these are all. So, so this question is false, but, but these are the Doyle's conjecture, which is still open. Uh, so. All flat. On the standard. And so it's, it's a really simple so to the simplest infinite triangulation of the complex plane, we still have some unknown questions. So let me, let me verify for you that this is, in fact, a flat. It's, uh, uh, the, the calculation is really simple and elegant, and so let me show you that. So we want to verify that these circle packing, oh, by the way, one, uh, I really should show you uh, the picture. It's, 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 this, these, are, um, these, are the, these functions are really the discrete exponential functions. So. This, uh, this should be think of as a discrete uh, e to the z exponential function. So you see the spiral pictures, and that's why, uh, that's why uh, 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 this name. Okay. So let me show you why this is a flat. Uh, let's go back to this picture. This is a topological triangulation, hexagonal. Every, uh, every vertex has degree 6. And now we assign the <coughs> radius to every vertex. Uh, Every vertex, we are going to assign a, a positive number. Uh, according to, so uh, let me just focus on one vertex. This is a, a symmetric picture, and so this is 0, 1, eta uh, location. And now uh, you assign the, the radius according to this linear function. So, so, so this, this picture is, stands for the radius assignment. Uh, say at 0, it's 1. At A, at, at this, uh, Location one, this is e to the f of one. Let's call this a, and then uh, by linearity, this should be one over a. This radius is one over a because it's linear. So if this is a b, this is one over b because it's linear. And this should be uh, 
this, the sum of these two vectors is B, and so the multiplication of the two should be B, and so it's B over A and B over A. So, so the, look, the, the, the radius at these two points are determined by capital A and capital B because of the linear condition. So that's the radius assignment. And now you go to the length. Here is the length, uh, length assignment. Okay, so the length of this edge according to Thurston's recipe is the sum of the two radii, it should be a plus b, and this is one plus a, and so on. And now you, you stare at this picture, you see the amazing phenomenon uh, that, uh, that the triangles are similar. So uh, let's focus on, on these three triangles, these green triangles. Okay. Um, if you take this triangle and multiply by, by a, uh, 1 plus 1 over a becomes 1 plus a, and this becomes so a plus b, and this becomes 1 plus b. And if you take this triangle and you multiply by, by b, and you have the same picture. So, uh, so these three uh, green triangles are similar, and if you label the angles as a, b, c, and you see uh, the same A, B, C's appears. So, so these three angles here is really the sum of the inner angles of the triangle, and it's pi. You, are, uh, you apply the same token. These three triangles are, are also similar, and, uh, and you see uh, the angle distribution should be uh, that. And so the total sum of angles at every vertex is twice the sum of uh, angles of two triangles, so the two pi. Okay, um, and so it's always flat. Uh, but you, I, I recommend that you w want to see the pictures. It's really very beautiful. It's every circle is tangent to six others, and it's really spiraling toward a fixed point, and, uh, which you can really imagine. Suppose uh, this A and B is a positive number other than one. This monodromy is, uh, th there is this uh, monodromy here, the eigenvalues are not equal to one, and so it's really accumulating, okay. Um, let me tell you, uh, there is a similar picture. So this is the picture, uh, this is an example of uh, circle packing. Uh, in some sense, this is uh, a Thurston's way of discretizing uh, analytic functions. And there is a similar picture which discovered by my uh, collaborator, and that's the, uh, the picture related to the discrete conformal uh, uh, approach that we, uh, we are gonna propose. So, uh, so here is the next example, as this is discovered by, um, by my collaborator, David Gu, Song, and Wu. And we are gonna call this uh, spiral uh, hexagonal triangulations. Um, so instead of in Thurston's picture here, uh, we take the metric, the circle packing metric, uh, coming as a sum of the radii. Um, and now in in our approach, we're going to take the multiplication. Okay, so you assign every radius as a positive number. Now the length of the edge instead of sum, we talk about the multiplications. And, and that makes a lot change, but uh, lots of things still uh, exist, persist. So, uh, so here is uh, the same thing. So uh, let's, uh, the same um, standard hexagonal triangulation, uh, the standard hexagonal lattice as a vertex set, and uh, F. is a linear function, and take any linear function, and now we need to assume something, because uh, in a circle packing case, uh, any radius assignment will produce uh, triangular inequality. Uh, now it's no longer true, and so uh, such that this function length <coughs> now we assigned every edge a 
a positive number defined by this, L of V1, V2, to be e to the f of V1, uh, e to the f of V2. So instead of the, the sum of the two radii, now we just multiply. Um, so such that this one satisfies the triangle inequality. Okay, there's no guarantee that multiplication will produce three numbers satisfy triangle inequality. So, so in other words, uh, uh, this uh, this is a PL metric. Uh, then, um, then the metric is flat. So. Uh, And uh, it's, uh, it's the same picture now. Uh, uh, it's, instead of just looking at uh, the sum, you look at the multiplications. And me. Yes? In that picture, in the middle of the body, Martin, I think this might appear to the bottom of the Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this should be, this should be B. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so uh, this is uh, the same picture. Uh, the verification is very simple. Instead of looking at the picture and look at the sum, now look at the multiplications, and it's your homework. It's these three triangles are still similar. You have A, B, C, and these three are the same. Okay, so, uh, so this uh, for the students, sorry, this is the homework. I go back and check it, um, and they have the same conjecture. So these are the only one. Uh, if the length comes from the multiplication, these are the only one. So the conjecture is. Uh, Produced in this way. Okay. So uh, this uh, is just as a, so a warm-up is our approach to the discrete. This uh, this scalar multiplication is uh, is a discrete uh, conformal change, which we, we we propose for as a as a candidate. And there are some really interesting results I will tell you later on. Okay. So that's uh, uh, that's that. And now uh, let me tell you uh, the. Let me tell you the main, uh, one of the main theorems I'm going to prove. This is the assistance version of uh, discrete Riemann mapping theorem. So, uh, so this is uh, it's a it's a really wonderful theorem. Uh, this is uh, a discrete. Riemann mapping theorem. Uh, by a uh, curve and drift and system. Um, so, so to define it, uh, let me let me uh, let me make a definition. So uh, a circle packing on the on the Riemann sphere or C is a, a collection of closed around disks uh, with disjoint. Interiors. So, uh, if you take uh, take a collection of uh, of closed round disks whose uh, interior are disjoint, so this is a circle packing in the complex plane or, or a Riemann sphere. Okay, so uh, so this is very simple. Uh, it's called a circle packing. Whenever you have a circle packing, you have a circle packing metric. Uh, that's what uh, uh, motivates the assistance. Uh, uh, and definition. Okay, so you just draw the uh, draw the edges joining uh, the centers of uh, pairwise tangent 
circles, and that will be a circle back metric. Uh, its nerve, so the nerve of a circle packing is uh, the graph um, G in the, in the Riemann sphere of the complex plane uh, such, that, such that its vertices are the, are the circles. So uh, such that uh, vertices correspond to circles and edges are uh, between uh, vertices corresponds to uh, uh, pairwise uh, tangent circles. So, so uh, this blue curve that I draw is the nerve of this uh, circle packing. So if you draw another one, uh, then uh, the nerve is this planar graph. Uh, now here is a here is a theorem of Andre, uh, curb Andreev system, which I will prove uh, uh, by uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's a following. So for any simplicial triangulation. T of the Riemann sphere, uh, you take any triangulation of the two sphere, then there exists uh, a circle packing on the Riemann sphere unique up to our Mobius transformations. Uh, such that its nerve is uh, the one skeleton of T. So, so if you draw any triangulation of the of the sphere. Uh, you can produce a unique circle packing whose, uh, whose nerve is your given one. Um, and this pattern is unique. This circle packing is unique up to Mobius transformations. Um, so I will, I will prove it later on. This is just as a warm up, what kind of. Uh, 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 this is sort of a, a prototype of these polyhedral geometry. Uh, uh, we go, th so this theorem is really uh, uh, coming from a purely topological input. Uh, I produce a geometry for you, uh, uh, which is unique. Uh, so, so let me just show you uh, one ex uh, special case, which we will use later on. Uh, if I give you this triangulation, this is a triangulation of the of the of the of the two sphere with two triangles, one inside, one outside. Okay, so, no, this is not a simplicial, but just take that. So this theorem is also true if you relax this a little bit. Uh, uh, this is still true, but uh, for, especially for this case, uh, you can now uh, that's uh, the circle packing associated to the to the to the one graph. And the statement here is that this guy is unique, as we can see. Uh, so the uniqueness in this case is relatively simple. Three pairwise, I uh, give you three, uh, two pairwise tangent. I give you uh, three circles, which are pairwise tangent. You can send a Mobius transformation sending this to the other one. That's the uniqueness part. And, uh, and the proof is, in this case, is really elementary. Uh, so. Mobius transformation. So what you do is you take uh, the tangent point between A and B and send it to, to infinity. So make a Mobius transformation uh, so that uh, the tangent point between A and B uh, 
is in at infinity, and then uh, A and B becomes uh, two uh, vertical lines. A and B, and C is a circle tangent to the two vertical lines. And, and we see clearly, this, this picture is clearly unique, right, after, after scalings and translations. So, uh, but for more uh, circles, the uniqueness part is non-trivial, okay? So, uh, okay. Am I going too fast or too slow? Okay. So, so that's these. Now let me Let me wrap up the elementary part, and then we're going to go uh, to some more interesting part. Uh, so the first is a Gauss bonnet. So let me just mention this quickly. Uh, so if uh, if S uh, T D is a compact uh, P L surface, I give you a compact polyhedral surface. And then the sum of the uh, curvature is, is equal to 2 pi times uh, the Euler characteristic. So it's, it's kind of interesting that in the, in the polyhedral case, uh, the definition of curvature is simple and very intuitive. And gauss bonnet is also extremely simple. Uh, so the proof, uh, let me prove quickly. Let's assume uh, uh, for simplicity that S has no boundary. OK. If it's closed and uh, 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 if, if it has a boundary, the proof is the same. I'll leave it as homework. Um, and then uh, the Euler characteristic of the surface is equal to uh, the number of vertices, number of edges, and number of uh, and the number of uh, uh, triangles. But, but this is a triangulation. So the number of edges is equal to uh, every triangle has three, uh, has three sides. So, uh, so every triangle will give me three uh, times uh, uh, of the number of edges. But each of that is counted twice. So, uh, so take a triangle. Uh, uh, it has three sides, and each of these sides is counted twice. So, uh, so this is equal to v minus half of half of the number of uh, uh, triangles. Okay, so that's the Euler characteristic. Now, uh, the the Gaussian curvature is equal to. Uh, Uh, 2 pi minus, it's here, 2 pi minus the angles at V. So I'm going to write it as uh, so, so uh, angle alpha at V of alpha. So this, uh, this symbol means uh, alpha at V. Okay. So that's a definition of the curvature. And this is equal to 2 pi times the number of vertices. And we sum over all vertices and all angles as the vertices. But, but we can regroup this. This, is, this sum is sum over all angles. So uh, it's equal to 2 pi times v minus I look at the set of all triangles and, uh, and all angles, angle alpha inside P. 
uh, because uh, so here is here is your triangulation, and we are summing over all these angles here. And the first sum is sum around the vertices, but we can regroup this uh, according to the sum over each triangle. So, and so that's this, and, and this number is pi, uh, because it's a Euclidean. And so, uh, so we have the, the result. So this is uh, equal to uh, 2 pi times v minus pi. So it's a 2 pi. OK, so this is the elementary part uh, of it. OK, good. Um, and now let me tell you something uh, more interesting. So the, the goal now is to, to prove uh, this uh, uh, curb and drift uh, system theorem. And I'd like to tell you some variational principles associated to it. Okay, so uh, from from this picture, uh, one of the uh, one of the key ingredients in this uh, geometry is to relate metric uh, and its curvature. The metric curvature relation is one of the key problems, and uh, in the in the polyhedral setting, uh, the metric comes from the length of these triangles, and the curvature now according to this is. Uh, so this is really the length and the angle relations of a triangle. OK, so we need to study a little bit of this elementary geometry. I have a uh, Euclidean triangle, and we like to understand how uh, the lengths and angles are related, which is uh, the cosine law, right? So, uh, so let me set up uh, the, the notations. So let's let delta be a Euclidean triangle of lenses L1, L2, L3, and angles theta1, theta2, theta3, uh, such that theta i is opposite to Li. So the picture is, uh, is this picture. L1, L2, L3, uh, theta 2, theta 1, and theta 3. And the theta, we think of that as a function. So the curvature here is a function of the length. And we know it's coming from the cosine law. So, uh, so the cosine of theta i is equal to Lj squared plus Lk squared minus Li squared over twice of Lj Lk. Uh, I'm going to stick to Lijk distinct. OK, so for the, for the rest of the calculation. Um, uh, we need to understand this a little bit better. This is a really high school or middle school in geometry. But there's some interesting fact which we can say. But before doing that, let me also recall uh, the, the, the gram matrix. Oh, this triangle is equal to the dot product of n, r, and s. So where n, r is uh, the unit outward normal vector 
to the off, to the off edge. So, uh, so here I'm going to put n3, n1, and n2. Okay, so that's that's the, the our normal vector, unit normal vector. But maybe it's, it's a simpler one. You just draw is uh, the inscribed circles and uh, and rescale it. And so these are the three unit normal vectors. And you form the dot product of the two, and that's that's a gram matrix, which can be written as uh, as a negative of cosine of phi uh, R S. So uh, it can be defined as uh, cosine. These cosines are the angles here. So where uh, your phi of i j is equal to uh, is equal to theta k, and phi of i i is equal to pi. Okay, so that's the same thing. This is a gram matrix. It's a symmetric uh, uh, positive semi-definite of rank two. So this is a symmetric. Uh, this is a positive semi-definite rank two. Okay, so so here is a, a very useful uh, proposition, which we, which is the basis of of a lot calculation we, which we are going to ca carry out later on. Um, it's it's a following. So so the first uh, is uh, we all know that so if you will fix uh, L two L three and and in increase the L one, then the angle is going to be increased. That's the first statement. It's a simple and trivial. And the second is a key. Um, the second is partial theta i, partial l j, i and j are different. So when we increase l1 and leave l2, l3 fixed, we want to see what happened to the angle theta 2. It's given by this formula. It's minus partial theta i, partial l i, cosine theta k. <coughs> um, and I. Uh, so the third one is a consequence, but uh, maybe I'm going to add one more. Let's let A to be the area of the triangle, which is 2Li Lj. So let's see, okay. <clears throat> and the third one is the quantification of it. So I can write Li, partial Li, as Li over 2A and partial theta i, partial lj, as um, uh, minus li cosine theta k over 2a. So it's, it's a consequence of this. And, and the most important and the interesting part is this matrix, partial theta r, partial log ls, is congruent to the gram matrix. Uh, with no space, <coughs> uh, I, so you may wonder why I, why I separate one and two, and three covers one and two. Uh, the, the interesting part is this one and two is also true for spherical and hyperbolic triangles. So this is true for spherical. And so most of the calculations that we are going to do, in fact, also works for uh, polyhedral surfaces in spherical and hyperbolic geometry as well. That's why I like to single this out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let, let me let me prove it. 
of just for fun. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really simple. So I'm going to prove one and two, just to, to make sure, it's, especially two is the most interesting one. Um, and we, we will see many applications of this uh, uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Uh, so to see, this is uh, the cosine law. So proof of one, you take, take a partial, partial Li to the cosine law, uh, we get, uh, what do we get? I will get minus sine theta i, partial theta i, partial l i. That's the left hand side. And the right hand side, uh, these are uh, constant, and so it's, uh, it's going to be uh, minus l i over l j. OK, and so two canceled. Uh, and so we get the result, right? So, uh, so this implies one. And also we get, we get this, uh, because the area is that. Sorry. The area is half. OK, so, so we, get, uh, we get one immediately. Good. Uh, now let's take a look at the second part. Uh, this is uh, the interesting part here. Um, the interesting part here. So I'm going to take partial, partial L, J to the cosine law. And I will get minus sine theta i partial uh, theta i partial L, J. And now uh, I need to use the quotient, quotient law, because I'm taking j's, and this is a constant. So let me, let me write it as 2LKLJ squared. That's a quotient rule. And, uh, and, and I have uh, uh, 2LJ squared minus uh, the derivative of that is LJ squared minus uh, plus LK squared minus LI squared. So that's a quotient law. And uh, we can cancel these two and put it together. So I get uh, the numerator is now LJ squared plus LI squared minus LK squared. And I cook up a denominator. So it's 2LK LJ, sorry, LI LJ. Let's Make that. And Li, this is L, K, L, J. OK. So this, according to the cosine law, is equal to cosine O theta K. And this, according to that, is equal to, uh, so, uh, so I can put a plus sign here. Uh, this, according to that, is, uh, is sine theta i partial theta i partial l i. So uh, I can cancel theta i. And theta i, I have a minus sign. And, and that's it. OK, so the rest I'm not going to calculate. It's just, just bubbles. So that's, that's a formula. And this tells us something really interesting. And so let's take a look at. Uh, Sorry, what is the, the, the last one's a null space of oh, this uh, 3 by 3 matrix. Uh, what's here? Yeah. It's congruent to the grand matrix of the triangle. In the the grand matrix. The, 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 the congruent, congruent. Sorry. This Li. So L, the length, the log of the length. 
the variable instead of taking the usual length, take log of it, appears to be very nice. OK, so, uh, so let's take a look at some consequence of this. Uh, it's So let me make a remark. So let's write Li to be e to the ui. Uh, then, uh, then theta i is now a function of u1, u2, u3. Uh, uh, the, the proposition tells me that uh, partial theta r partial u s. This is a symmetric. Uh, sorry, there is a, there should be n to the negative. Because, uh, no, this is a phi. Sorry, this is a, I'm thinking of the other case. So this is a phi. It's a, it's a positive, but uh, the next one is negative. <coughs> is symmetric uh, positive semi-definite of rank 2 and null space generated by 1, 1, 1. OK. Uh, now if we have uh, uh, such a matrix, so what is a uh, symmetric means? Uh, symmetric means, of course, uh, partial theta i, partial u j is partial theta j, partial u i. And that is the same thing as, uh, if you look at the differential one form, let's call this uh, uh, delta i starts from 1 to 3 of theta i ui is closed. Maybe I'm going to call it a different name. OK, so we have a closed one form on the space. So what's a space? So this is a closed one form uh, defined in, in a space uh, on u, which uh, satisfies the triangle inequality, right? So, uh, R3, so EUI plus EUJ is EUK. Uh, it's, uh, this space is not convex, it's, um, uh, but it's simply connected. This is simply connected, open set. And we have a differential one form in this uh, space of uh, a simply connected space, and so we can integrate it. So let's let uh, w of u to be integrate uh, of this one form. It's a well-defined uh, one a function now because it's a closed and this is simply connected. So this is now a a function. Uh, and, and this matrix is what? This matrix is a Hessian of that, right? So this uh, satisfies, uh, by definition, the variation uh, of, uh, of, the, of the metric. You we think of the metric is the curvature. Um, and that should also remind people of the Schlafly formula in 3D. So, so this is sort of a, uh, a Schlafly type. identity in 2D. Uh, and this matrix is, uh, is a Hessian of that. So the Hessian of, uh, of this function is, uh, is positive semi-definite.
So this tells you that the W is uh, locally convex. So we have some really interesting function now. Uh, this is, uh, which is defined on the space of all triangles. It's locally convex, and the gradient of the function is, uh, is the angle, which is a curvature. And uh, if you have something like that, it should be really interesting. And so let me tell you, this uh, at the beginning, we we were aware of these functions, but we we were not able to find explicitly at the time. And so uh, uh, this this was discovered by us in 2004. Uh, uh, the maple was not powerful enough. Nowadays, uh, with maple 14, you can integrate this. Okay, so it can tell you what the function is. And so let me. Uh, as a homework, I will tell you what this function is. It's really interesting, and it's related to three-dimensional hyperbolic geometry. So, uh, so this, uh, since I'm not going to use it, I'm just going to tell you what uh, this function is. So this is the homework. The homework is that uh, let's let lambda of t to be the Lobachevsky function to sine of u du. That's a Lobachevsky function. So prove that. Um, this w is the Legendre transform of the hyperbolic volume. So uh, w of u is equal to uh, i starts from 1 to 3 of ui theta i and plus a constant. The constant is explicit, and let me just drop that. So, uh, so recall the summation i starts from 1, 2, 3, theta i is equal to the volume of the ideal hyperbolic tetrahedra uh, with angle, with dihedral angle, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. So uh, this, this was really in Thurston's notes. Whenever, uh, whenever you give me a Euclidean triangle, you can produce a ideal hyperbolic tetrahedra. So, uh, so think of the complex plane as, uh, as the infinity of the hyperbolic space. Uh, you take a Euclidean triangle, and then you can produce a unique hyperbolic uh, ideal tetrahedra, whose dihedral angles are theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. And it was, in fact, computed by Lobachevsky. Uh, before knowing the Riemannian geometries, that the volume of this guy is given by these functions. And this is the Legenda transform. So, so this W is the Legenda transform of the, of the volume of hyperbolic tetrahedra. Um, and the convexity, on the other hand, it was a work of Igor Riven that uh, the volume is a convex function of the angles. And so the convexity follows. OK, good. And now let me tell you uh, the next one. Uh, which is related to the circle packing. So far, this is not. I'm going to tell you the one. So we are headed toward the proof of this. And uh, um, so let me tell you this amazing, really wonderful work by Colin de Verdier, who uh, developed the variational principle for this. So, so here is the theorem. So suppose, uh, suppose uh, a Euclidean triangle uh, delta of length 
is given by a circle packing. Uh, so Li is equal to Rj. Uh, I'm going to write e to the uj plus e to the uk. So uh, Ri, we always take a log. Uh, the radius is e to the ui. OK. And angle. Theta i is now uh, a function of u1, u2, u3. So the, so the picture is, uh, is the following. You take three pairwise tangent circles uh, uh, whose radii are r1, r2, r3. So this is e to the u1, e to the u2, and so on. e to the u3, and this is the length is L, uh, L2. Okay. Um, uh, of course, we also have the angles. These are the curvature here. And now the theorem is this. So then, uh, Partial theta i, partial u j, is equal to partial theta j, partial u i, is always positive. So again, i j k distinct. i j k distinct. Um, it's always positive. So, so the second part is then uh, the matrix. Uh, partial theta r, partial u s is um, <coughs> symmetric, and negative semi-definite of rank two uh, with null space. One, one, one. It's the same statement, looks like, but in different setting. Okay. Uh, so, so knowing this, uh, you can now we can now go through the same, same process. Uh, this matrix is symmetric. Now, this in this case, all of these we have no constraint on radius. Radius is any number positive. Uh, uh, so, so we will have the same. Same construction for a, a now a concave function defined on R3 uh, with exactly the same property as Z. Um, and that's really wonderful. It's, uh, now, it's, instead of locally convex, it's, it's, a, it's a globally concave function, satisfies the Schlafly. And, and with this, you may almost see why uh, why uh, uh, curb and Joseph Thurston theorem follows? Okay, so it's a basically say we go from the metric R to the curvature, and 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 the, and the curvature determines the metric, the coming from the gradients. Okay, so let me let me prove this. I'm going to come back to the proof of this uh, tomorrow, uh, but the proof is straightforward in some sense. So. Uh, So what do we have? Um, I have partial Li partial Ui is equal to 0 uh, because uh, it's independent of Ui. And uh, partial Li partial Uj is equal to the e to the Uj. That's also it's coming from this. So uh, now uh, let's compute partial theta i partial uj, I want to make sure this is a positive number and is symmetric in uh, i and j. Uh, by the way, this, uh, uh, before this was calculated, it was really observed by Sesten. Sesten didn't do the calculation, but he was, it was really clear to him. Uh, but this quantification gives you, uh, in some senses, a better uh, 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 
that are more information. So let me tell you what's distance inside first uh, before I, I calculate this for you. So uh, if you look at this picture here, we have a three pairwise tangent circle, so we produce a triangle coming from the centers of it. And now uh, suppose I, I increase the radius one a little bit, and R2, R3 are fixed. So, uh, so you will increase this a little bit. This, by the way, is in Cessna's notes. Uh, so the triangle changed a little bit. Uh, it will change to this, this triangle. And so what uh, Cessna observed was if we increase the first radius, and then the first angle, theta 1, is going to be decreasing. So this will tell you uh, uh, ui is going to be negative. And uh, these two angles is going to increase. So theta 2 and theta 3 is increasing, as you can see from the picture. And that's what this uh, information says. But it's more. It's, uh, it's really symmetric. And so we can do some analysis. Uh, OK, so, uh, so this, according to the chain rule, it's a partial theta i, partial l i, partial l i, partial u j, and then partial theta i, partial lk, partial lk, partial uj. I don't have to take a partial lj, uj, because this is 0, right? So partial lj, partial uj is equal to 0. So that term drops. <coughs> and these two, we can use that. And these two, uh, we can use. Uh, uh, that uh, derivative law. So uh, I'm going to go a little bit fast. Uh, this is okay. Let, let me be slow. So this is a partial theta i, partial l i. This is e to the u j, and this is minus partial theta i, partial l i, cosine theta j, and that is e to the uj. OK, so I use, uh, use this uh, derivative calculation for the first. And I uh, have that. And now partial theta i, partial l i, I can use this angle formula. So uh, this. This is uh, Li over 2A. And I have the same EUI. So E to the UJ, 1 minus cosine theta J. And, and from this, you see it's positive, right? It's the 1 minus cosine. So the positivity follows. And that gives you this negative uh, definiteness. Um, and now I need to show it's also symmetric. So what is this? It's Li over 2a e to the uj. It should be sine squared theta j over 2. I have a 2, and so it canceled. <clears throat> and now uh, let's go back to the picture a little bit. So, so let me just draw the picture here. Right. So you draw the inscribed circle to a triangle. This uh, I'm going to call the Vj, and so this is the theta j. Um, the, the three pairwise tangent circles is really uh, coming from the tangent points. And so, so these three tangent points of the inscribed circle gives you the the tangent point for these two. Okay, so these two lenses are the same. So this is r to the j, which is e to the uj. Okay, um, And this will be used i. This will be ri e to the ui, and so on. Uh, so uh, if, I, if I call, let's let r to be the radius 
of the inscribed circle. Uh, what we see is that uh, uh, this is r, this is a 90 degree, and this angle is uh, e to the u theta. And so, uh, so we see e to the uj is equal to r times um, cotangent theta j over 2. This is coming from the circle packing metric. So I can replace e to the j by that. This will come to e i over a uh, r cotangent theta j over 2 sine squared theta j over 2. And that is equal to uh, that is equal to uh, L i, so we can combine these two by angle formulas since sine theta j over uh, twice of a times the radius. Uh, and this expression is symmetric because of the sine law. Okay, so, uh, so we proved it's a symmetric and it's a positive, and then the rest of it follows. Okay, so we have now, uh, so this is really a, a, a beautiful quantification of Cessna's uh, geometric uh, 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 observation, and, and, and tomorrow we're going to make use of this Corinne Dirudier principle and to prove, the, uh, to prove the theorems. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you.